It's not what I'm seeking. Like it's the air I'm breathing. I want your presence, feet on the earth. Heart full of heaven, zeal for you. Completely consumes me. I can't get enough, I can't get enough of you. Your fire is burning right through me. Church, why don't you say hello to someone around you, greet someone this morning, and hello to everybody watching online, wherever you are, we're so excited you're tuning in today. Awesome, well good morning everybody, welcome to Celebration Church, especially if you're new today, we really want to welcome you, we really want to thank you for being with us today, if you're new or you're here from a long time ago, today we've got something in the chair in front of you, it's called our Connect Card. It's our way of getting to know you a little bit better at Celebration. So during the service, if you can take that out in the chair in front of you, fill it out. At the end of the service, we want to give you a gift. So what we'd like you to do is go to the lobby. If you go to guest services in the lobby there, they're going to give you gift bags full of all sorts of good stuff. So we'd like you to have that right after service. Please do that if you're new. Absolutely. One of the things we're going to talk to you out at guest services is our Next Steps class. And what Next Steps is, it's your greatest way to get connected here at Celebration Church. We believe here at church is not just a place to attend, but it's a place to belong. We want you to feel at home here at Celebration Church, and Next Steps is the easiest way to do that. So, how do you do it? What do you do? It's at 11.15 today, so right after this service, head to guest services. There's a flag out there that says Next Steps. There's somebody who wants to meet you there and help you find your way to the class today. If you've been before, just head back there. You know where it is. So there's child care provided for you, and there's a light snack as well. So 11.15 today, if you've not yet taken it, make sure you do so. Awesome. Well, we also believe that 2019 is going to be a great year year for your marriage yeah. 
So in order to do that, we've got a great conference for you coming up in February. It's our Better Marriage Conference. It's going to be Saturday, February the 9th from 9 till 1230. So, and we've got something really special planned for you. We've got a great couple coming from Vancouver. It's Brent and Karina Cantillon. Been married for many, many, many years, 37 years. So I'm sure they've got lots to teach us. More They're former me. pastors. So we are so looking forward to having them with us. So we want you to register beginning today is the early bird rate. We want you to get that early bird rate. So beginning today for the next two weeks only. So make sure you get in on that because we really want to have a great conference. You can either register in the lobby today. And there's also more information on these little cards, Better Marriage cards. Either register today in the lobby or on the line at celebrationedmonton.com. Absolutely. Lots, to, lots happening today at church because today is our Connect Group Expo as well. So everybody cheering has been in a connect group before and it's changed their life. So what is our connect group expo? Our connect group expo is today. Is it next week as well? Today and next week to get connected, to get signed up for a connect group. So there's tons of connect groups. There's the most connect groups starting this semester than ever before. So you gotta, 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 gotta get yourself in a connect group. So go find somebody out in the lobby afterwards. Go grab a coffee, hang out for a little while. Don't just leave church right away. We know it's a little colder than it was yesterday, so it's warm in here, stick around. Grab a coffee, find somebody that's wearing a red t-shirt if you don't know. There's boards all around for you to find what you would wanna do. Trust me when I say this, connect groups will change your life. It's all about connecting people and it's all about growing your faith. And I promise you, if you're committed to a connect group, it will happen for you. It's happened time and time again. It's happened to me. It's happened to so many other people. We would love for you to get connected to a connect group today. That's it for Pastor Leslie and I. Why don't we jump on our feet again as a band continues to sing.
God, we come to you today with open arms, Lord God, knowing that we need you to speak to us. God, that it's your words that are going to comfort us. It's your words that are going to heal us. And we just pray that today, that you would be here right now with us. God, we thank you that no matter what has happened during this week, you've been there. Thank you that you live inside of us. And, and God, you love us so much. And today we just offer our hearts to you saying, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, you may be seated. Welcome to Celebration Church. Man, we are so glad you're here this morning. You picked a great day to be in church. And uh, I believe that God wants to do something in your life today. I believe that God's probably already done something in your life through that worship this morning. And uh, I know he has in mind. And man, when worship is like that, I could sing the whole service. I could just <laughs> throw out the notes. Let's just keep going. But um, hey, my name is Joel, and uh, today we're starting a brand new series called Little Giants. And uh, this series kind of comes from where, where it comes from is, is uh, have you ever gone into a, a, a new year and you have some big things that you wrote down? Right, some stuff that like scared you that you wanted to do. Did anybody, did anybody do that last year? Anybody do that this year? Right, we do these things where we're like, man, I'm going to do this this year. I'm going to do that this year. We got big expectations and that's, that's awesome. Keep doing that. Um, but I found myself year after year writing some big stuff down. And then I would find the piece of paper, you know, somewhere, somewhere around like September, October, November. I'd find that piece of paper and go, oh, geez, I better get I better get to work, man. I got like 45 days left in the year, you know what I'm saying? And there's like eight credit cards to pay off in 45 days. We're going to do that. Uh, but, uh, but I find that every year you go in with these big expectations, these big things you want to accomplish. Um, but what I found in my life personally last year, man, last year was a great year for me personally. And uh, I found that I really moved forward in some things in my life. I've read more books than I ever read before. I read more of my Bible than ever before. And it wasn't because I had this big expectation, right? It wasn't like that I set this thing and I was going to, I'm just going to keep looking at that big thing. It was just little steps that I made towards it. And it was just little decisions that I made daily to get me there. And I really feel like that God's put on my heart that for these next four weeks, let's talk about the little things that we can do. So that 2019 can be the biggest year of our lives. And uh, one thing I noticed is through, through last year is that um, I just, the, the same feeling kept happening that I, I, never, I never had enough. And, and you're like, enough what? Well, you name it, I didn't have enough of it. Anybody feel me this morning? Like, you never have enough time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, how can I get a little bit less sleep so I get more time? But then I never have enough sleep. And then, you know what I mean? You, you never have enough money, right? The bills just keep coming. Man, first, I don't know about you. I drive SUVs. There's never enough gas in those things. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about, Alberta? We never have enough fuel. It's like I just went to Costco. I waited in that 35-minute lineup, which felt like all year that lineup was that long. And there's never enough gas in this car. Uh, growing up in my house, uh, it's, not that we were, it's not that we were poor, but there was never enough food. And it wasn't, it wasn't a money issue. It was a four boys issue. You know what I'm saying? My mom would buy sugar cereal like once a month, and one of my brothers would eat like 60% of that cereal, and the rest of us would go hungry. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I felt like I never had enough patience. You know what I mean? Like, God, if you could just give me a little bit more patience, that would be nice. But uh, no matter how many dishes I do, I never do enough. Come on, am I preaching? No matter how much laundry you do, all that little tiny laundry that you're doing for those kids, you never do enough. Um, and that's what I found for my life. I don't know about you. But even though it, it feels like I never have enough, people keep asking for more. Right? There's another appointment, another meeting, another bill to pay. And there was a, Bible, there was a woman in the Bible who felt like she did not have enough. 
There's a story in 1 Kings 17. We're going to read through it today. It's a longer one, uh, but we're going to get through it together, and you are going to enjoy the slowness of my reading this morning. Let's do this. <laughs> then the word of the Lord came to him saying, this is, he's talking to Elijah, get up and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. I have told the woman there whose husband has died to feed you. So Elijah got up and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the city gate, he saw a woman there gathering sticks. And he called to her and he said, I ask of you, get me a little, little giants, a little, see it works, uh, <laughs> little water in a jar that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her, said, I ask you, bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have no bread. I only have enough flour in the jar to fill a hand and a little oil in the jar. See that I'm gathering a few sticks so I may go and make it ready for me and for my son. Then we will eat it and we will die. There's a very positive woman. I'm going to eat this bread. I'm going to die. That's my New Year's resolution. All right. Elijah said to her, have no fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a little loaf of bread from it first and bring it out to me. Then you may make one for yourself and your son. For the Lord God of Israel says the flour in the jar will not be used up and the jar of oil will not be empty until the day the Lord says rain, sends rain upon the earth. So she went and did what Elijah said. She and he and those of her house ate for many days. The jar of flour was not used up and the oil did not become empty. It happened as was spoken by the word of the Lord through Elijah. Through Elijah. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you hearing the voice of God? When was the last time you heard the voice of God. I don't know about you, but I want to go into this year hearing God's voice. I don't, I don't want to go into this year making decisions on my word, on what I think, but on what God has spoken to me. And I think when we say in church, we talk about hearing the voice of God. You hear people talk about the voice of God. I think sp people expect it to be giant, right? People, God is, is big. He's omnipresent. He's up there. He created all of this. So we expect his voice to be like, oh, I'm going to speak to you. It's going to be this big booming thing. But what if his voice is supposed to be little? What if the little giant is his voice, right? We're expecting giant, but what if it's supposed to be little? I want to show you a little later in Kings. Elijah is, is, is there, and, and here's what happens. This is Elijah, same guy from the last story. It says, then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire. The Lord was not in the fire. And after that came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, and he went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, Elijah, what are you doing here? So the Lord speaks to Elijah. There's all these loud, big things going on, and the Lord speaks to Elijah in a whisper. See, if God's not shouting at you, it's because he wants you to come closer to him. If you're not hearing the voice of God, no matter how close you think you are, it's because God wants you to come closer to him. See, a whisper... A whisper is intimate. Like in this setting, as I speak to you, this is not really intimate, right? We're not face to face, but that's not how God wants it to be. See, there's a little giant in his whisper, but you need to be close, right? When your kids, parents section, let's talk for a second. When your kids are freaking out and running around the house and you really want to get their attention, like there's some screaming that happens, but when you really want to speak to them, what do you do? You bring them close to you yeah. and you whisper, right? You bring them close to you because they have to tune out everything else in the world in order to hear what you're saying. So if God isn't speaking to you, it's because he wants you to come closer to him. And here's what I found. The times when I'm asking God to speak to me, when, when I do not hear, when I do not hear from him, it's usually because I'm trying to get him to go along with my agenda. 
It's usually because I'm bringing something to him saying, God, answer this prayer. And he's like, I'm trying to speak to you, but all you want to talk about is this. And I'm over here, and the reason you're not getting it is because you're focused on what you want, not actually on what I want. And then what happens is we make decisions in life without even considering what God wants for us. Right? How often do we react to the things that happen in our lives and never ask God what he wants us to do? Your life is a re- result of how you respond to the circumstances in it. So how are you responding in your life? See, don't be satisfied with your initial reaction to everything. Man, thank God I'm getting this because my reactions usually aren't the best. But thank God that we, we can hear his voice. Don't be satisfied with our initial reaction. So how do we hear his voice? How do we hear his voice? Well, I've seen God speak to me through books. You know, somebody else writes something and I read it and then I feel God speaking to me. Man, if you have not read anything by the author C.S. Lewis, try that this year. Because God will speak through his words, even though they're written like 60 years ago. God speaks through that man still to this day. Or in worship. Man, when we, when we tune out the things that are happening around us and just worship, man, that's why we're so intentional about our worship experience here at our church. Because we want God to speak to people. Because let me tell you something. As good as they, a job as they do, we want the Holy Spirit to speak to you during that worship, right? So that's why we're so intentional about this experience. Because a word from God in that time is unlike anything else and can change your life more than any word that I can say this morning. Or we, we seek the Holy Spirit. That's how we can hear God's voice is just asking the Holy Spirit. But his Bible, his word, man, that's a great way. That's a great way to hear the voice of God. Just seeking him daily in his word. So how do we know? How do we know it's the voice of God? Well, like I said, the Holy Spirit can confirm things. The right people. And notice I didn't just say people, but the right people can help you confirm if it's the voice of God. You need the right people in your life. To help you know if it's a voice of God. See, don't, let, don't just let anybody mentor you. Man, people love getting mentors, and that's great. But don't just make it your focus to just get a mentor because you need a mentor. Young people, we love having a mentor, don't we? Don't just let anybody mentor you. Look at the impact someone's life is having. Look at the results of their life. Does their life point you to Jesus? And if your mentors aren't actively ser- serving the local church, man, you need some new mentors. Yeah. I think there's plenty of people that can teach you plenty of things in the world. But, man, we want teach you, people to teach us how to fill heaven. Yeah. And so watch who you let mentor you. Yeah. But the biggest thing is the Bible. Does my feeling line up with what I'm reading? Do my feelings line up with my readings? Check it and check it again. Yeah. And, and I would encourage you to not just consume what God has for you, but contribute to what God is doing. Because Jesus was the servant of all. So when we don't serve, we don't give ourselves an opportunity to be like Jesus. And uh, I think that the number one thing that we need to do is is to be like him. And that's why we're so intentional about saying next steps every single Sunday because I believe that God has more for you in your life. He wants you to be filled and fulfilled. And God wants his power working in every single person's life in this room. See, if this, wo- if this woman didn't listen to the voice of God through Elijah, she would have never seen the power of God. If she never listened to God's voice, she would have never felt his power in her life. The second question I want to ask you this morning is, what have you been feeding? What have you been feeding? Are you feeding what God asked you to feed? Or are you, are you feeding what you love? See, this woman wanted to feed what she loved, her son. But God was asking her to do something else first. He was asking her to trust in him first. He was asking her to take a step of faith first and feed Elijah. Make me a little loaf first. With the little bit you have, make me some. But what did she want to do? I just want to feed what I love, then we'll go die. (laughs) But she fed what God asked her to feed, and then his power was revealed to her. So what are you feeding? Is it just relationships that benefit you? Is this just your job that benefits you? I know we need to be the best employees in the workplace, but we have to watch what happens in our lives. Is it just about your desires? See, one of the best ways, one of the best ways we can love God is to love what he loves. 
our focus must shift on just our lives being full to fulfilled. And sometimes, I want to tell you this, sometimes your life can look like you're serving Jesus, but you're still just serving yourself. Come on, this happens to me. This has happened to me before where it might look to the outside like I'm serving Jesus, but in actuality, I'm serving myself. Let me talk to you this morning about Romans 8. Those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscle, but never get around to exercising it in real life. Those who trust God's action in them find that God's spirit is in them, living and breathing God. Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open, into a spacious, free life. Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God and ends up thinking more about self than God. And that person ignores who God is and what he's doing. And God isn't pleased with being ignored. Whew, I don't even have to preach this morning. I can just read the Bible. I'll just let it do the talking. Let me tell you something. I want to just be, I want to be real with you this morning that I have done this. And I haven't just done this in my personal life, but I've done this in ministry as well. I have done things that are all about me and not about what God wanted to do. It wasn't about hearing what God wanted me to do. It was all about what I wanted to do. It was all about what I thought things should look like instead of seeking God. A couple of years ago, uh, we did some stuff, and, and uh, we, did, we did a youth conference. And let me tell you something. God worked through this youth conference. Man, God spoke. Man, through the messages that were spoken at that youth conference, it was amazing. Our team did an incredible job. They, they put on just the greatest youth conference ever. We had so much fun. Man, we had so many kids come out. It was incredible to see what God was doing in this place, even though I know deep down inside it wasn't the, 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 the beginning of that youth conference wasn't about what God wanted to do. It was about what Joel wanted to do. So God can use all things for good, but it doesn't mean they're always going to be fruitful, and it doesn't mean they're always going to have favor on them. Because that youth conference was something that it was, I knew that was, it was like a chip on my shoulder that I was trying to prove how good I was in ministry. That I was trying to show people, hey, I can do this. It's not, it, I, it was something that was selfish inside of me. That I wanted to create this thing because I wanted to show what could happen through me. So in my heart, in my heart it was all about me. And God can still bless it. That's the cool thing because God's like, it's going to happen at my church. I'm going to bless it anyway. <laughs> but after doing that a couple times, I was able, especially during the second time, it was cool to see God reveal to me, hey, you're not doing this for the right reason. And, and I, I got to see that I was ignoring some things that God was trying to speak into my life. I was ignoring some things that God was trying to bless. And God was like, I'm trying to bless something else, but you're so distracted with doing whatever it is that you want to do. But man, when we open ourselves up to God and just say, I'm not going to be obsessed with myself anymore because that's a dead end, as it says in your word. See, I was giving everything I had to something that was my desire. Instead of giving, something that was hit, giving it to something that was his desire, right? I was feeding the only bread I had to something I was never asked to feed. So what are you feeding? Stop asking God to bless your will and ask your will to bless God. That was the last time I checked, and it says, thy will be done, not my will be done. And I want God's spirit working inside of me. And so if I remember that it's all about him, it's all about what he wants to do, it's all about him speaking to me, it's all about putting, feeding what he wants me to feed, man, we're going to get some good stuff from that. We're going to have good results because God will, will bless that. The last question I want to ask you this morning is what's the little bread that you have? What's the little bread that you're holding on to? What's the thing that you're saying, God, have all of me. Just don't touch that. 
God, come into my life, work through me. I love you so much. But I need that bread for my son and I. It's whatever it is that you're keeping from God. See, our fear is, if I give this to God, I won't have enough. But the promise is, you're never going to go empty. The fear is, oh my gosh, if I, give, if I do this, how am I going to take care of that? But his promise is, you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to take care of that. Here's the outcome. Here's the outcome of what I, what I have seen in my life when I give God what he's asking me for. See, when I, when I give God my time, when he's asking for my time, it ends up being the most fulfilling thing I could ever spend my time on. You know, there's things that I'm asked to do with my time that I'm like, again? Okay? Like, even in my, I'll just, let's just be honest. You know, sometimes this is a confessional for me, just standing up here. Uh, 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 but let's just be real this morning. Uh, that, you know, there, there are things that we're asked to do in ministry that sometimes I feel like, oh, again, do we have to do that? But then when we trust God with it, when we really surrender our heart and say, God, it's all good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you with this. That's when he blesses it the most. But when we go into it thinking, again, <laughs> like, let's be real. I, when, when we started talking about prayer and fasting again, I was like, didn't we do that last year? <laughs> didn't we just do that last year? And time and time again, time and time again this week, I just left this place feeling like, dear Lord, how can you fill me even more than you just did right now? And I think, I think that's where we get hung up is, is, is that, you know, in our flesh, we're like, really? <laughs> you want that? And God's like, just, can you just trust me? Like, that's the only bread I have. Can you just trust me? And when I, when I, give, my, when I give my money, right, it's the only way I can invest into eternity. So it don't matter what mutual funds I'm going to buy. It don't matter how well my house is built. It's never going to last forever. But the one thing, the only thing I can invest in, yeah, I'm going to talk about money this morning, church, because the church just wants your money, all right? Uh, I'm just going to go with it. Uh, you came in here thinking it this morning. All right, I'm going to roll with your bias. All right. Um, <laughs> But uh, let me take a drink of water before we go on. <laughs> but I would just encourage you this year, if that's something that you've been hung up on, that uh, God does want your money because he wants your work here to last in eternity. And so every time we tithe, I don't think about it in the moment. Like I don't think about this in the moment, but it always happens to me that when you know, you see a baptism take place in our church. We love baptism. In fact, you can go to Next Steps today, learn about baptism. You can be baptized in the first month, first month of 2019. Um, but every time there's a baptism that takes place, in the moment I don't think about this, but looking back on it, when I see the picture on social media, I, I, I think, man, thank God that I put him first in my money. Because then people get to be baptized and get to find out about this new life that they have. Right every time that takes place. And it's amazing to see that that's the only thing, the only thing we can invest in that lasts forever when we give God our money, when we give God that bread, if you will. When you give him that bread, he gives you some bread back. All right. Let's get this bread this morning. If I, uh, if I give God my family, if I give God my family, he can lead us better than I ever could. Right? Like we're called to be the leaders of our family. But it has to be about what God wants to do in our family. Not about what our agenda is for our family. And this is where I've seen people go astray a little bit. Is that they're great. They're amazing parents. They're, they're great leaders of their family. But they lead it in a way that they want to lead. Not necessarily hearing the voice of God. So I've been, I've been involved in youth ministry uh, for longer than probably most of you have been in our church. 
And I love youth ministry. I, I love it so much. But here's what I've seen happen over the years. Sometimes a parent will come and, and they'll, they'll be like, I don't like how this looks. It's not as controlled as it is on a Sunday morning, right? They, they, don't, like how, they don't like how there's milk being wasted by just being poured everywhere. Like, <laughs> these guys are laughing. You're like, what is he talking about? You just need to come to youth. We just pour milk all over everybody. It's great. Maybe you've driven your kid home after he's been covered in milk, but it's kind of an inside joke. You got to just see it to b- yeah. believe it. Um, but uh, but I've seen I've seen parents come in and s- kind of be controlling about it. Like I don't know that I want my kid involved in something like this. It looks a little bit crazy. Doesn't look as controlled as I like things. And what I've seen in the time that and I I, I want to speak like I want to be respectful here. I'm not just saying this always happens, but what I've seen is that when a youth doesn't get when a youth doesn't get plugged in to youth, then their faith doesn't become personal. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make their faith personal in that moment. And so a lot of times the parent will want to hold the family close and they'll be nervous about what we're trying to do. And, and what happens is then a lot of times the, the kid doesn't have a personal faith and then they struggle when they get a little bit older and you can't force them to go to church anymore. And so that's why youth leaders, listen to me this morning. That's why it's so important that you lead well. That's why it's so important that you are dedicated to your youth ministry. That's why it's so important that you are dedicated to leading to connect groups. Because, because these parents spend 12, 13, 14 years doing their absolute best to raise that kid. And then all of a sudden at 14 years old, Everything the parent says is stupid. <laughs> right? Everything the parent says, they're like, oh, you don't know, mom. You, don't, you weren't raised in this era. You don't know how life is right now. And that's when it's your turn, youth leaders. That's when it's your turn to turn it over and say, come on, let's make this faith personal. And that's why it's so important that we lead well. Because I'm going to raise my kid for like 12 years, I'm going to do my very best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's your turn. Because yeah. he's not going to want to listen to me for a certain amount of years. And then it's your time. And I'm going to give my bread and just trust God with it. Come on, are you going to do that? I think oftentimes we just want to protect the little that we have. But... Even this woman said it in the story, it's not enough to sustain you anyway. (laughs) So you might as well trust God with it. I'm going to eat it then die. Like really, why even eat it in the first place then? (laughs) Why not just die? Like (laughs) it's all you have is flour and oil. How good is that bread really going to be? Like you can't make no focaccia with that. How many people know we've been fasting this week if we wrote a sermon about bread on the end of it? Amen. (laughs) But uh, God wants to fill your jar so full that you'll never, you'll never run dry. So what are you holding on to that needs to be given to God today? Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God and ends up thinking more about self than God. Is it in your job? Is it in your family? Is it in your boyfriend or your girlfriend? Right? People want God to, you know, they want this great relationship. But God, maybe just stay out of our dating life. It's God. He's got to be the center. He's got to be the center. He's got to be the center. Let me tell you, there is a time that is coming where you're not going to have butterflies all the time and be like, we're so in love. Oh, my gosh. No one's been in love as much as we're in love. <laughs> maybe it's your talent. Maybe, it, maybe, maybe you're talented. And this church and God's movement in this city could be so much better because of your talent but you'd prefer that your talent would glorify you instead of God and what I love what I love about our time in worship is these are people giving their bread come on this morning we could like 
They were giving their bread this morning. And God was glorified because of it. I love that. I love that. And I believe that there's more people, and I'm not just talking about music, but you are talented. Man, you got a personality. And your personality is great. It helps you in your job. It helps you at home. It helps you get away with stuff with the cops. Like, <laughs> hey, man, what's up? <clears throat> but God needs your personality. He gave you that talent for a reason. God needs you welcoming people into his house on a Sunday morning. God needs you to go into the world. God needs you to go into the world and give your bread. God needs you to not just walk into that coffee shop just because you want a coffee, but to go in and say, God, I'm ready to give you my talent in this moment. I'm ready to lead people to you. I'm ready to tell people about how much you love me. I'm ready to just make a friend. Man, if we would just be willing to make a, a little bit more friends, I think God could do so much more in us. If it's not about just, hey, let me get my coffee, let me go on with my day. But it's not, it's not just about those gifts. I think that sometimes the bread is the thing you're holding back from him that some, not too many people know about. Like your excessive drinking. God, I, I need this to relax. I need this to chill out. Life is, life is busy. Life is crazy, and I, I need that. Don't, it's okay. You're, he's going to forgive you anyway. You can get drunk now and, a while, now and again, right? Like you hold it from God. There's, but the, 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 the reality of it is, and I'm using drinking, but there's so many other things that we do to, to calm us down, to relax us, to soothe us. But the being of the Holy Spirit is inside of us at all times. He's with us through those times. And I'm not, I'm not saying you can't have a Bud Light once in a while. Come on, church. But, um, <laughs> but what I am saying is there's things that we get into, right? And the Holy Spirit is with us. And he wants to. But when we, when we hold our bread back, we don't give him a chance to show himself. When it's all about that, then we don't give him, give him a chance to reveal himself to us and say, I'm going to fill you up. I'm going to fill you till you're full. Sometimes it's our, it's our loose tongue, right? It's the gossip that we get into, right? Because it makes us feel better about ourselves, right? Oh, my gosh, Becky, do you know <laughs> what she did? And that loose tongue, right, it makes you, makes you feel just a little bit better than the next person. But God's like, no, let me, let me reveal myself to you. We're almost about to land this plane this morning, but uh, I think there's little adjustments that we can make in our thinking that can make a giant impact so we can get this bread in 2019. God wants you to have an open, like in this message, God wants you to have an open, spacious, free life. See, the, the part of the scripture that I didn't put in there was that a few, a few scriptures later, Elijah ends up saving her son's life through what God did through him. Her son dies, Elijah brings him back to life. That's the man that she fed. So she was so worried about feeding the son and take care, taking care of those needs. God's like, just put me first. I don't care about what you care about. You care about what I care about. I'll care about what you care about. She heard the voice of God. She fed the man who end up, ended up saving her son's life. And her jars did not become empty. And your jars will not become empty. Church, let's get this bread together. My prayer for you is that uh, you take the little that God's given you, the little things he's asking for, and offer it so that he can do giant things through you. And maybe God's been waiting to bless you, but you won't hold out the jar. God's been waiting to fill it up, but you just won't hold out the jar. But he's telling you, man, hold that jar out. I'll make sure you have more than you 
could ever need. Come on, can we stand together today? Man, there's people in this room that I think that that as we talked, as we worked through this text a little bit today, I think the Holy Spirit's been working on your heart. Maybe you've been coming here for a long time. Maybe you've heard a lot of messages. Some you've liked, some you haven't. Uh, but the Holy Spirit's been working on you for a season. Or maybe you're here this morning and you, you thought, man, 2019 would be a good year to try this church thing out. I've been meaning to get to that for a while. Or maybe you're at home and you're watching online and, and uh, there's a screen between you and I right now, but there's not a screen between you and God. And he wants to speak to you wherever you're at today. And together, church, I think that, uh, that God's speaking to all of us today, but, but in this moment right now, you know that, that you haven't been living your life for God. You know that you haven't asked Jesus, the Jesus who died on the cross for you, the Jesus who gave his life for your sins, you haven't asked him into your heart and you're not living for him today. If you're in the room and what I'm saying is resonating with you and you are thinking it's your time to make a decision and it is your time. There's never the perfect Sunday. You don't have to go home and organize your books. Make sure you got a holy Bible, you know, like make sure it's clean and everything before you make this decision. You are ready today. But you have to take that step. If you're in the room today and you'd like to take that step, I'd love to pray you through this really quick. If we could all just bow our heads and close our eyes. And if you're not praying with me, that's okay. You can bow your head and close your eyes. And you're just not praying. You're just respecting the people around you. That's cool. We're all just going to bow our heads and close our eyes right now. And if you're in the room and you want to pray that prayer with me, I'd love to just see your hand shoot up real high on the count of three. One, two, three. Just lift your hand with me right now. There's hands all over this room. You're making the best decision you could ever make in your life. You can go ahead and keep your hand up with me right now as just a step of faith to say, God, I'm never going to be the same. God, I'm taking this step. I'm giving you this bread. God, I believe that today you're going to make a difference in my life. And if the whole church could repeat after me in agreement with everybody making this prayer, let's do that right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for me. Today I would ask that you would come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. From now on, I live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together for everybody today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. If you'd like more information about Celebration Church, head over to our website at celebrationedmonton.com. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe.